In the spring of 2007, during my junior year here at Pitt Greensburg, a U.S. Senator who would go on to become the, uh, the President of the United States gave a commencement speech at Southern New Hampshire University and he spoke about this very topic. I watched his speech and there was a particular part that resonated with me, something that he would go on to say several more times uh, to audiences across the country. Uh, he said, uh, there's a lot of talk in this country about a federal deficit, uh, but uh, I think we should talk more about our empathy deficit. The ability to uh, put ourselves in someone else's shoes, to see the world through those who are different from us. Uh, I hope to I hope you choose to uh, broaden and not contract your ambit of concern. Not because you have uh, an obligation to those who are less fortunate, although you do have that obligation. Uh, not because you have a debt to all of those who helped you get to where you are. No matter 
who our political leaders are at any given time, no matter how pervasive closed-mindedness may seem. We as individuals, everyone here, myself, we as individuals still have the choice to be receptive and embrace humanity. The uplifting of diversity via the humanities is a civic responsibility. I am, uh, as I told you, I'm a native of Washington, D.C. And there you can find a plethora of monuments and memorials. And one of my favorite places is the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. Uh, they have uh, 14 quotes that surround this on this inscription wall. Uh, they come from Dr. King's speeches, sermons, and writings. And this right there, that's called the Stone of Hope. It's really big, it's pretty cool. And one of the quotes says the following. Make a career of humanity. You will make a better person of yourself, a greater nation of your country, and a finer world to live in. The fact that you all are here today means that you are passionate about the humanities. It means that you are intellectually curious about the diverse world we live in. It means that you care about the people and want to better understand them. Uh, that is why exposure is so important. It's, it's great that you all are here today exposing yourself to higher education, reading different people, uh, really thinking about the humanities. Exposure can really change your perspective on things. For example, a hot topic, hot blood topic, gun rights, right, gun laws. See, I grew up in D.C. where at a certain point when I was a child, it was nicknamed, uh, not affectionately, the murder capital of the world. It might have been at the country, but it was definitely a lot of crime. We also had strict gun laws, and of course, Supreme Court would have a say on whether or not it was constitutional or not later on. But as a result, living in the city of D.C., I always thought of guns as being something that cops had and criminals. People weren't hunting. The only time I saw a deer was dead on the highway. And I never like drove past and said, ooh, that look good. <laughs> but when I came to Greensburg, I started meeting people who wore camouflage as if it was fashionable. You know? I met people who hunted not just for sport, but to bring home food. I ate at the houses of friends and family who had spaghetti with deer meat. I said, this ain't bad. My perspective started to broaden and I began to change my views on gun rights and realize you can't have a one size fit all approach to gun rights. That was because of my exposure to a place it was very different from where I was. Exposure, it makes available opportunity to think differently. It enriches you by diversifying your experiences. You learn and grow from being exposed to new things. So, I tell you all to continue to do that. It will expand your perspective on life. And speaking of making a career out of humanities, uh, how many of you all plan to actually have a job in the humanities? I show of hands. Oh man. <laughs> oh, can you go? No. Go ahead. Be confident. You thinking about it? Okay. Yeah, so okay. Got some work to do. <laughs> um, well, if you do plan on uh, a career in the humanities know that in order to be better at it, you got to continue to expose yourself to it. You know, if you want to be a better teacher, a, a philosopher, a writer, an artist, a musician, a, a historian, a linguist, for example, you have to continue to expose yourself to those things. Read a, a variety of good books to become a better writer. Consume a variety of good art to become a better artist. Listen to a variety of good music to become a better musician. 
visit museums, travel the world. It's all about expanding your mind and your perspective. In closing, I'd like to share with you a poem that my father wrote when he was 13 years old. I always tell him, man, I hope I can be as wise as you were when you were 13 years old. <laughs> <laughs> he said, stages and phases are psychological mazes, guiding you upwards as do stepping stones to a higher plane of mind. The pace of a crawl following a fall is progressive from a walk and then a run. But with elapsing time, perspectives broaden in mind, rendering you the endurance to climb. So climb on. Thank you all so much for having me. Thank you again, Dr. Shum, for inviting me. This is a pretty cool honor to come back to my alma mater and to speak to you all about something I'm very passionate about. I hope you liked the words that I had to speak today. Thank you again.